Hey gang, I'm Paul with Sled Pack. Welcome back to the channel. Happy you, New Year. You know, Jordan, Happy New Year. We had an awesome holiday. We hope you did too. And we accomplished a lot last year, right? Sure did. Built this big green giant. This was a mud pit. You all remember those early videos? And we feel like we've done a lot of work. It took us a while, but sure. for three guys, first time, I think that's awesome. I think it's great. For 2024, what, what do you think our goal should be? This time next year, where do we want to be? All right, we're standing uh, here, January 2nd, 2025. Yeah. What do I want to see? Yeah. Well, obviously, I want you up there, right. nice and warm, That'd be instead nice. of in this cold building. <laughs> True. And if we could have this slab poured and this structure framed, mm. framed during the nice mm. cooler uh, autumn and the cool winter, yeah. that would be great to have this framed yeah. and then move inside during the cold winter months. Sure, we could be working inside the building, doing all the finishes with the air conditioning, and then once it starts cooling down, slab, frame, and do all that. That sounds awesome. Yeah, we've learned so much on this one, I think we can pull that off. And another goal of mine for 2024 is to improve my foundational nutrition. And that is super easy with the sponsor of today's video, AG1. Guys, you know them, we love them. AG1 is foundational nutrition that supports gut health, nutritional development, the immune system, and- Stress management. And stress management. And even though Jordan, Rad, and me are different ages and different body types, we can all tell how beneficial AG1 is to us individually when we drink it in the mornings. And just like the high quality products that we're about to install on this building in this video, AG1 has the same high standards. One scoop and eight ounces of water in this very cool shaker each morning and I'm good to go all day long. So guys, if you're ready to improve your foundational nutrition for 2024, can't believe we're already here, head on over to drinkag1.com slash stud pack. Check them out on your very first order. You're gonna get a year supply of vitamin D3 slash K2 and five free travel packs, which are awesome when you're on the road. So thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video. Now it's time to head back to work. All right, so what's our next step here? Fascia and soffit. Yeah. Kind of one of those details that, you know, is kind of a pain. I've replaced a ton of it and it is really difficult, but we've got a really slick system for this building. Let's show you what we're up to. Very first thing, materials. Mm. What did we choose? There are a ton, right? There's so much. When we talk about all the research that we have to do, because we are building it for the first time, and we're trying to do all this research, figuring out what is the best material for us. What's the best material for them? Might not be the best material for us, because mm -hmm. we're in Houston, gets 114 in the summertime with incredible humidity. There's all kind of PVC products, right? Yep. Probably the top of the ladder as far as price is concerned. Right. Start coming down the ladder in price, you're gonna end up with your cementitious products or even some of the wood products yeah and if you go on if you go online and you look up soffit fascia there's some stuff out there but the literature and the amount of access that you have to people doing soffit and facial work is pretty limited we found so it took us a while to do some research but we have some really cool mm -hmm. stuff in this video so let's go ahead and talk about what we chose and why all right so for the fascia and let's just stop right there right yeah because people get confused. What is fascia? What is a soffit? Okay. What's an E? Sure. So the fascia is this board right there. I don't know if you can call that a fascia. Yeah, it, it's a rough example, but that's what it is. If you have trouble remembering, just remember your face, right? The face of the building, that's your face. That's the face. This right here underneath is the soffit. And the whole thing to me is called the E. That's how I think about it. And that's sure. how I like to think about it. All right, so what do we choose for the fascia? What did Jordan choose? He chose Azek Exteriors PVC trim board. This is one side of it with a protective plastic. It peels right off. We've actually used this before on one of our early, early videos on the Stud Pack channel. True. So textured on one side, smooth on the other. Jordan likes the smooth and that decision for smooth fascia kind of drove his decision for the soffit underneath. For the soffit right here, gang, we have some Hardy, James Hardy, non-vented smooth soffit material. This is gonna be eight feet long yep. by 24 inches wide. I'm gonna show you the smooth side, the finished side. Yep, there you go. That's what you want. So it's super smooth. It looks awesome when it's painted. Risinger's got it on his crib and he's got a video on that. It looks awesome. And we like this stuff. We had to get eight feet because that's the, uh, the length mm -hmm. if you get 24 inches. We needed 24 inches because our eaves are roughly 20 to like 16. So right. we wanted a nice big overhang. So we, right. needed, we needed a nice piece of this that would cover that width. Right, there are soffits and there are eaves, just like our neighbors here, that are very thin, probably a foot or less. And if you do a foot or less, you can get much longer lengths of soffit material, which is great for speed, less joints. But we have the eight foot stuff. We've already installed some and it looks fantastic. So we're not too worried about it. 
And you said one key word that I think we need to explain to everybody. You said unvented. Non we don't have empty holes. Correct. We don't have any holes because we have a cathedral ceiling, the attic space, if you want to call it that, between the truss and the truss area is not vented. We don't need holes. Yeah, we monopoly it's framed all it. Up. Yeah, yeah, we monopoly exactly. framed it. So the eaves are added on. The eaves serve no purpose other than to look cool. So since that's what it is, non-vented. But they do make vented stuff if you have an attic that needs to be vented. So mm -hmm. All right, so why do we choose PVC mm -hmm. over a cement board fascia? Right. I'll take that one if you don't mind. Go ahead. So on the angled side of our roof, we knew we needed an angled dado in our fascia board to accept our soffit material we just like that. We didn't need it. Dad really likes that detail. So I do. Sometimes Look you gotta, cool pick, your, you gotta pick your battles with this guy. So. The, the option was to just butt it like that and fill this with caulk. Right. And to me, yeah, I'm not doing that. I like that detail. It was kind of a pain, but not really. We were well, able that's to do why it we on did, our that, table yeah, saw. That's why we chose PVC, so we could just run it straight through the table saw. PVC cuts like butter. So real, real simple. Yeah, any woodworking tool works great on the PVC. Yeah. This stuff, not quite so much. Being able to use woodworking tools on our PVC was a heavy decision-making factor for us. We could have gone with a James Hardy fascia board, but that means that now we're cutting cementitious soffit and cementitious fascia. And if you know anything about cutting cementitious material, it's rough on your tools, it's rough on your lungs, not the most fun, so. Yeah, and I did not want to run cementitious fascia board through my saw, the dust would have just torn it apart eventually. Right. So Azek, love it, it'll never rot, neither will this, and that's probably the biggest problem. In mm. my career, when you have wood fascia, wood soffit, where we live, it just destroys in a matter of years. Yeah, wood-based products don't do too well with the humidity. We've learned that, we've talked to a lot of people, and it just, you know, in Houston, doesn't hold up too well. So that's why we're going with the yeah, PVC. This is, to me, a lifetime love it. solution to the softest. Now, how much did you spend? So the Azek trim, we got 13 pieces. That was gonna come out to $1,440, which is not bad. I, th I think that's great. 13 at 18 feet long right. each. That's pretty cool yeah. also. And for our quarter inch, 24 inch wide by eight foot hardy soffit, it was about $580. So not too bad, about $2,200 total. Yeah, and two stories up, you don't want to be going and back and do that later on. And we True. also got enough to do the porch with this. So yes. that's gonna look killer. Yeah, I'm excited. So kind of the biggest challenge of this was how to make this angled dado. Now let's walk over here to our saw stop. So I actually bought an eight inch dado blade for this saw, but the saw knew that I had a smaller blade in there and it would not start. I thought I could bypass it, but you can't. So we kind of tricked the saw, we simply put in two 10 inch blades with a spacer in between. I know it's not recommended, but it's what we are gonna do. And so I've already got it set up, as you can see. This is our sample. We already got it set up for the angle, the depth of cut, everything. You can see I'm just gonna run that right through there. We're gonna take two of these 18 footers, run them through. The thickness of these two blades is not quite enough. So then we'll make an adjustment to our fence make a second pass and we end up with this groove right here. And why in this location? How did you know where to put that groove on the Azek to accept the hardy and make sure that it was all good? How do we do that? Yep, so we have full width. This is seven and a quarter. We don't need to rip it for the sides. Okay. We just need to rip it for the gable ends. And I wanted half an inch right here exposed down below. I think that's a cool detail. It's not too little, it's not too much. It's right in that Goldilocks zone that we like. All right, let's talk about this pesky little angled dado. There's a lot going on there, and a lot of information we need to know. The very first thing I need to know is the angle. I gotta set my saw blade to cut that angle. We used the level app on our phone and established this was 34 degrees. That tells me I just have to use the bevel on my saw, 34 degree angle to cut that dado. It's gonna be nice. Now, the other thing I need to know is the width. We simply use the width of our hardy soffit material as a guide. This is quarter inch material. And we went a little fat. I'm gonna say that that groove is like 5 16 wide. That way we're not fighting this when we're trying to align it on the roof. And the other thing, this is probably the biggest step, is the depth of the dado. If I go too deep, this little section right here is gonna be too thin and this could break off. But I don't want it too shallow because I want this fully engaged in that slot. So we figured 3 eighths of an inch, just about right there, is perfect. So 3 eighths of an inch engagement from here to here. Three quarters of an inch material, it's going to be fine. Now I know that looks like it's a little bit of material and this could break off, but I tried to bend it and it's really strong and it's going to be perfect. So we've got all that information. The other thing is how far this way, in other words, how far down is this dado? If I remove this piece of soffit and the top of this is tight to our uh, zip on our roof, 
This looks like it's a lot, right? Like it's a big overhang. But as you can see, when I put this in there, it's really nice. Got about that half an inch that I was looking for right here. So how did we determine that? Well, it was really trial and error. A lot of trial and error. We came up and down this scaffolding a bunch. We cut our first test groove. Didn't work out the way I wanted. I put a piece of tape over it to tell me not to use it anymore. And then we worked on this side and dialed it in perfect. And you can see that dado is one we used before we stacked the blades and we had to move it like four times. That was a pain. Yeah. All right, let's head downstairs, make that cut. All right, guys, here's our setup. We got the angle dialed in. We got our fence dialed in, got our feather board dialed in and our height on our blade dialed in. So we are all ready to go. Let's put this one aside, grab two 18 footers, run them through there. Yeah, we got seven. Perfect. Plus a long piece. Mm -hmm. Plus these. Okay. Sending cook. <laughs> This one lifted. Oh, lifted a bit at the end. This one lifted on the end. Oh, that's yeah. okay because we can make that one the one over here. Cause probably uh, gonna be like. I don't think we can, right? Oh no, we can't. Yeah. It lifted. We can mm -hmm. make it on that side. Wasn't that your job, dude? Yeah. I was trying to get the shot. Your whole head is the shot. It's okay. Let's just run, run it through, through again. again. All right, let's run it through again. Okay. I got an idea. Let's just run it through again. <laughs> All right, guys, both dados are made really easy with the table saw. Our next step is to cut these to length or a rough length. They're 18 feet long each. Our building's like 28 feet. I love that we're only gonna have one joint there. And where the two boards come together, we're gonna put a miter on them and make a scarf joint. So we have more surface area to seal it and it's gonna go away when we paint it. Got the saw set at 45 degrees. Got a mark right there, let's make the cut. We have the saw set up. I say we put the mating scarf joint on this board so that step is done. Cool. All right, let's pull this one out, flip it around, make another cut. All right, guys, our AZEC PVC trim board, the fascia is cut, ready to go. Now it's time to cut the hardy soffit. We're gonna use this blade by Diablo. How do you know you're using the right blade? Well, this one says it on it. James Hardy, right there. This one has four teeth. This does a great job. In comparison to my old one, which I just took out of the saw, it has six teeth. Well, it had six teeth. Check it out, it only has two now, so this one's trash. So I'm gonna put this one in my saw and we're gonna cut some soffit. All right, guys, we are up here on the scaffold. We are ready to put up this piece of soffit. And when we were downstairs, you saw me wearing that mask. You gotta wear a mask whenever you're cutting anything like this. Any cementitious product, it's just not worth it. Protect your lungs and get yourself a proper mask. All right, Rad and I are gonna throw this up here. Hopefully it fits. Oh, you guys tested it for me. It's perfect. Nice, nice overhang. You like it? Yeah, that's nice. And look at that eight foot layout right there on our thing, just like we planned. Be tight over there. I'm good. Nice, dude. Is that the, is that the move? It that's is the move. move. What's the move? Show them the move, Rad. <laughs> Why do you do that? Because for some reason, this thing hates being upside down. Right. So if we try to shoot it twice in a row, jams every single time. So what do you do? Show me the move. A little gravity push down, <laughs> and we're good to go. Yeah, that's the stud pack gravity push down. All right, love it. <laughs> Hang on. But it still shouldn't do that. No, and it still messes with us. I said, Brad, we need a little bit off that board. He said, I got it, look at this guy. They're <laughs> like hitting you. Like, Who needs a grinder? 
right, dude, you are crazy. All right, it was a little fat. Let's check it now. Yeah. Cool. Money, dude. Sweet. All right, let's put it in. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Yep. How do you like that oh, reveal, yeah. Jordan? It's great. I'm in. We're good down here. All right, gang, for fasteners for our AZEC trim, here's what we're using. Got these directly from AZEC. See right there? These things are awesome. Two and a half inches long, stainless steel, nice little Torx head, reverse thread on the top, pull it tight. Love them. These are my favorite screws I've ever used. I've actually never done one of these. You uh, you took all the fun. Oh. I'm finally going to get to do one Ooh. here. Now this first one, we're putting up a little bit high. Oh, no. Oh my gosh, <laughs> dude. This is a magnetic bit, but they come out. This one we're putting up a little bit high so the drip edge would cover it. We're gonna put a plug in it anyway, but at least it's one less hole, right? All right, I'm gonna push that up tight. Drive her in. I did overdrive it. We're using the white band on that bit as a depth gauge so we can get our plug in there. Right. Let's put a few more screws and we'll show you what we're talking about. They start easy. I love how they self counter bore. I'm loving how easy it is and how well our finish work is meshing with our rough framing. Yes. It looks so good. Yes. This is, you could honestly plug this and leave it. It looks so nice just from the factory. Yeah. 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 Good for Absolutely. Azek. I'm going to go like every other and then we'll come back and fill in. Cool. All right. We've got all our screws in and we're going about 16, 18 inches apart. You need that. So this stuff lays flat. And it expands quite a bit, so this is going to hold it tight to the building. So you put one up high like I talked about, but this one, it seems high, but if we go any lower, it's going to start pushing this out because of the pitch of our roof. Go ahead, Red. So now the magic, Rad's got the plugs, mm. and they really only go in one way. There's like a rounded end and a flat end, right? Yeah. Stick it in. Nice little hammer action. Beautiful. That's it. And like Jordan said, it is it is like you could leave it right without painting it. From the street, it looks beautiful. It, lo it does look beautiful. I love driving up and seeing it up on the other side. And it just disappears. Sweet. All right, you guys finish that. I'm going to head downstairs. We'll cut more soffit and get this side finished. Well, awesome. let's do the back of the gable side, dude. Oh, that's right. I forgot yeah. about that. That's going to be fun. So let's come down here and show them what you're talking about. So we left this piece of fascia just a little bit long. It's sticking out past our sub fascia on the gable end right here. So we're going to go fit that piece of finished fascia board. Then we're going to get our router and trim this piece off flush with it so there's no measuring. It's going to be perfect. All right, gang, we're on the back side of the house. And as you can see, this is our last piece. And we had to leave this piece off. It's much cleaner to have a little extension there, butt our piece up against it, get a nice joint down there, and then trim it rather than trying to fit this and then make that joint look nice. Uh, that's just what we think. This is our first house, what do we know? So we got this angle finder and I'm gonna go down there and I'm just gonna find a little angle and call it out to dad so he can make a good cut down there. So that's about it right there. And then try and take it without adjusting it. 121. table saw was 32 degrees for the miter so 32 plus 90 would be one uh 20 22 Two. and you said 121 yeah so we're a degree off loving it all right toss me that yep that's yours i won't drop it <laughs> 120 one one got it get right there yep all right 118 and 5 eighths All right, guys, we got that last board up on this gable end. Now, we didn't have to rip it, right? This is a full width from the factory, seven and a quarter. But because of the angle and we want it to flush up here at the bottom, we had to rip it at six and a quarter. What was it, six and three eighths, Jordan? Yep. And we got this little point. We're going to trim that off with the buzz saw. But first, I'm going to flush these two up with my router. Got a flush turning bit in it. It's going to go real quick. All right, now you can see the last problem because we have a dado and we couldn't make a stopped dado. This dado is gonna show on the end. We're just gonna cut a little filler out of the same material, drive it in there, just like we drove the little plugs for the screws and that guy's gonna disappear. Jordan, you got a major dandruff problem, dude. Dude, <laughs> head and shoulders sponsor me. Sweet. Nice. 
nice, dude. Beauty. Right here. All right, give me that buzz saw and I'll trim this little corner. We are done right here. About to rain, dude. We got to go. Just kidding. Go, 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 go. Oh my god. Go, go, go. I'll tack it and then you can go to town. Yes, sir. Cool. You good? Yep. Cool. How's the joint look? Really good. Yeah, send it. Nice, Rad. All right, gang. We got this piece to go. We have to finish the soffit underside and then put our AZEC on. So what Rad and I are doing is we're getting our length first. I'll pull it there. He's gonna see where eight feet puts us. Oh my God. We are four inches off. Four inches off. All right, so we'll just come back to the- 80. And then we have this little off cut, gang. This is so much more easy to use rather than just trying to stick a tape measure up, up into that corner and get an accurate reading. So Rad's gonna stick it up there we're gonna kind of see how it looks. We know this one's great, so we're comparing it. It's a little off. We could probably add a little bit to that. So if we gotta add a little bit to that, let's see what the measurement is on this. 18 and a half. 18 and a half. So we'll go like 18 and 5 eighths for this. We'll do the same thing on this side. Let's go down here and check it. Oh, that's perfect. So this is actually the long part of this square. And right here we got 19, 19 and, and a half. half. And that looked pretty good to me. Yeah. So 19 and a half, yeah, so nice. a big old taper. So 18 and 5 eighths to 19 and a half oh, by Paul's 80 inches long. Paul's got that cut, dude. Yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna test fit this piece. All right, I'm good, Rad. All right, I'm in. All right, I'm in. All right, gang. Oh, we got a rock. Got a rock? Yeah. No, no, I just did oh, rock. Oh, okay, yeah, it's rocking. All right, guys, if you watched our channel when we put up the trusses, Remember we stacked them all to about this point and then we had to spin them around because we couldn't get them up the, on the roof. That has caused more trouble <laughs> on this project than probably anything else except the foundation. So what are you saying? We've got a little hump right here. Mm, okay. And we have a corresponding dip on the other side. Right. Now it's not terrible. You can't see it from the ground, but when you're up here and you got a little rock in this piece, not a rock like a piece of gravel, a little little pivot right because it's hitting that hump so we're just going to scribe this to the building we put up our siding and our trim right here it's going to be fine but lesson learned on the trusses all do right, not right. spin trusses you got to put them all in the same orientation yeah as soon yeah. as you before you cut the, the bundle strap off of them spray paint one in and make sure all that spray paint is on the same side as your building that's right yeah. so how are we supposed to cut, measure and cut a cut a big you know Thing to fit that well you know what this overhang is right what are y'all doing adding a half or five eighths yeah yeah so you're just gonna here let's take this down right so you can do it one of two ways you can hook your tape here and go to the building and holler that number out to me when i'm on the ground and i can add five eighths or you guys can add five eighths and give me the whole number okay and we'll just go every block 16 inches apart i've actually already got the sheet marked it's 16 inches on the back i'll just lay it out and we'll cut a little uh scribe line on it cool all right, gang, dad's got that last piece cut for us. It's going to go right here. And we've got this whip here for some permanent exterior lighting. Exterior, like Christmas lights, kind of, but those permanent type. I really like the way that looks. So we've just got that there. We're probably going to get comments about it. So it's there, but we're about to cover it up. So hey. let's cover it up. Oh, nice. All right, Jordan, you ready to explain what happened with that little notcher piece? Yeah, never done this before and just kind of ready to get this stuff up here and move on with the project. So we were going a little quick and essentially what we did was we offset this soffit piece, this end, we put it on one of our blocks. But what I needed to do was this soffit needed to be flush with the end of the building, essentially. Yeah, I'm gonna come in over here and try to get a shot for you. Yeah, this soffit needed to be flush with the end of the building. Right. Um, so that way this soffit piece could run all the way down and flush out here. Right. But we were like, oh, we'll split the block because that's what we've been doing for mm -hmm. everything. And we split it and it wasn't the right thing to do. So we we just notched this, it's no big deal. Yep. Well, and that's one of the reasons we started on this back corner, right? Right. Cause it'll be hidden. I like the notch method. It'll be fine. Yeah. All right, let's put this up. All right, we're gonna put it up. 
So Rad's over there on the roof. There he is, say hi Rad. Yo! <laughs> He's on the porch roof. Now they're gonna get it lined up. Like that? Yeah. We got our coil nailer with uh, galvanized nails in it. You got it, Jordan? Yep. Cool. Yeah, that joint looks great. Here before we... All right, guys, we have moved around to the front of the house, the main event, and as you can see, we've got the scaffold built. This center section, four high, that's 28 feet, and we're still not to the ridge. Got our guardrails up, our ladder up, we're all ready to go. But remember, on the fascia on the gable ends, it's six and three eighths wide, and the fascia on the sides is full width, seven and a quarter. That's so when we come down with that angle, it flushes out on the bottom and the top. We've got our saw all ready to go set up to rip here's our first piece we're going to send three through three 18 footers rip them all to width reset our saw cut the dado then we can fly all right we're rolling all right, let's get it let's get it up, up, good. All right, guys, here's the, I got you. That was, that was sketchy. As you, as you can see, a little bit of overhang that goes in our dado that we cut in our AZEC fascia board. Boys are getting it tacked up. These blocks we put in are 24 inches on center. It's really easy for them to find them. Well, we don't have to do the blocks. We're just go we're just going on the edge. Oh, because it's outside. not very wide. Right. Gotcha. The dado also provides a ton of support because the PVC is screwed in, so it holds this edge. The dado support is massive. It's huge. And we will also have trim here right. supporting this edge. Right. So the fasteners get pretty much hidden, which is great. And this is way up here. We are high up. We've got the angle oh, cut oh, for that end. That. Yeah. It's about 13 feet long, so I'm going to head nice. downstairs, pass it up to you guys. You ready? Screw it in. First piece of fascia. Yeah, buddy. So nice. All right, guys, and with that last piece of AZEC fascia right here, 
The soffit is done on this building and it looks great. Now we do have the back porch to do, but that's a little bit of a different detail. If you have any ideas, make sure you throw them down in the comments below. Now I've been sweating this soffit and this eave detail for quite a while. I knew we were gonna have to put a angled dado in the side here and the dados here, but it worked great combining this AZEC and the Hardy, two lifetime materials in our opinion. They'll never rot, they're gonna take paint great, and we can't wait to see what it's gonna look like after they're painted. But the scaffold's in my way, I wanna get the full effect, let's take it down. All right guys, the scaffold is out of the way, and now you get the full effect of what we see when we're standing here, and how nice does that look? All the framing is covered up, at least on the outside. Now we've made a great start on the fascia and the soffit, but we're well on our way to finishing the exterior trim. We got freeze boards, window trim, corbel, siding, board and batten, all kind of stuff that's gonna look absolutely amazing once it's painted. Now we sure appreciate you hanging in there till the end of the video. If you're not already a subscriber to the Stud Pack channel, go ahead and smash that button, ring that bell so you get a notification of our very next video, and go ahead and put you an angled dado in your fascia, just like we did up there. Slide your like button in it, smash it for us, and don't forget to check all our merch out over at bunkerbranding.com. Check out Stud Pack over there, we're easy to find. We're on Instagram also, at Stud Pack Official, and we'll see you right back here on the very next Stud Pack video.